Welcome to Straight Line MTB, and today we're going to be talking about a bike more controversial than the last presidential election. Welcome back to Straight Line MTB, and I am talking about a bike that some people either love or some people hate, and it is an e-bike. This is the Polygon Mount Bromo N8, so it is the top of two builds for this bike. And I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the specs because the value of this bike compared to any other e-bike on the market right now is exceptional. For under $6,000, you're getting an amazing build. And I'm talking about comparing it to other e-bikes. So you're getting the brand new upgraded Shimano EP8 motor. Um, you're also getting an XT group set. You're getting a Fox 38 fork and then a Fox X2 and that is the Performance Elite, so you're getting all the knobs that you can turn on that rear shock. The front shock is the Performance version, but I don't think we really need too much more than that. You're getting some Entity bar and stem, but I will have to say the package for this bike is unbeatable for the price. Take a look around and you will see what I'm talking about. Let me address the elephant in the room because there is a lot of mixed feelings on e-bikes. I've talked to several people who are riding e-bikes that said they'll never go back because e-bikes are just their thing. And I've also talked to the other group and seen some of the comments on our videos that e-bikes have no place on regular mountain bike trails. So being somebody who kind of had mixed, that maybe the latter mixed feelings on e-bikes, I will say that it definitely changed my mind riding this bike and I, they're not as easy as I thought it would be. Riding this bike on long, long climbs, I will say that this isn't just a bike that sits and pedals for you. you. I noticed that I'm having to put more pressure on the motor. It's not a motor that as soon as you pedal, you just go. The more resistance you push onto that motor, the faster you go. So I did find myself really getting, a, I'm gonna say it, you may not agree if you haven't ridden one, but I got a crazy good workout. The first ride that I did, I did with my buddy Raf, and we did a 26 mile ride and we were hammering the whole time. After that ride, we were just absolutely spent. And that was my first ride. And I, my mind was pretty blown because I didn't think I would have to exert so much energy on this e-bike because I was pushing, just really pushing that motor and that bike to go faster and faster on the uphills. Sitting on this bike in the cockpit, it did have a little bit more compact feeling. So it's not a traditional enduro bike because it does have 160 millimeters front and rear travel. Uh, the cockpit did feel a little bit shorter than something like our Spire or our Nuke Proof Mega, but it wasn't uncomfortable. It puts you in a great upright position, ready to really mash on those pedals and push this bike. That rear suspension, there are some people that are concerned, and I'm definitely with them, with all the pivots in that rear end, but there's something magical happening back there because I didn't feel any weird or harshness going up here climbing this bike it really ate that chunk up and it could help those big magic mary 2.6 tires front and rear really clawed their way up it didn't feel like a super long bike like an enduro bike i think it's a 1256 wheelbase so it's a nice nice right in the center with its uh 64 and a half degree head tube angle so it's not an unwieldy bike to get up the hill aside from its weight now it is a 50 i think on our size large is a 55 just over 55 pounds so it's a big boy um, but of course you got a motor, so it doesn't feel as cumbersome getting up the hill, but you're able to move it around nicely. Moving to the downhill again, this bike is just a blast on the downhills. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So that smaller, shorter geometry, similar to maybe like an all mountain bike, really gave it um, the playfulness. I know the 55 pounds kind of is contradictory to that word, but for a big heavy bike, I found it to be a more playful and maneuverable than I would thought it would have been. Um, and again, that rear suspension really helped you plow through a lot of that nasty chunk. Um, it did get a little bit overwhelmed when you're really hitting some of the really Really fast, fast, chunky stuff. Uh, but again, I think it's due to it's not a super long, long bike. Hitting some of the jumps and drops, I did get to the bottom of the rear shock. I didn't feel any harsh bottom outs. Um, that front fork, a 38, I think, you know, 
that is where this bike definitely needs a big fat stanchion for because that extra weight and you're really pushing this bike to go really fast i just think the package of this bike it just I would say it's almost perfect. The only thing that I would call out is the bar, this 35 millimeter bar, it just feels a little bit harsh. I would like to get something, maybe a 31.6 to give a little bit more compliance. But other than that, I just think the package on the downhill for this bike, it just was so much fun. You just turn that motor off or leave it on and just really just get down and dirty and plow this thing right to the bottom. I do have some constructive feedback for this bike. First, I'm gonna say the rear hub. While it's not an issue, it it is, it's something to get used to. I don't wanna say it's off-putting because. First ride on the downhill when you're freewheeling this bike, the hub was silent, and then all of a sudden it'd start, you'd hear that points of engagement, it'd start clicking, and then it'd get quiet, and then it'd click. I did grow to really appreciate the quiet part of it, so when it started clicking, I'm like, can you just shut up already? <laughs> so not a downfall, but something weird. I know it's the XT hub, I think they've changed. It used to be called the silence hub, but then I think they found out it's not so silent. So I don't know what the, what the mechanics are behind why it's quiet or why it's loud, but it's just something to remember if you do get this bike, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It just likes to change its mind throughout your ride and click or be quiet. Onto the EP8 motor, amazing motor. I have no issue with it. I felt like it gave me all the power I wanted, but I'm just gonna agree with some of the other reviews that I've read that it does have a clicking. It does clack around. It does take away from the experience of having a quiet bike. There's something to be said about a bike when you're going downhill, it's super quiet, just feels more refined. It does have a little bit of clicking after a few rides, I didn't really bother me. You come to expect it and it doesn't really become a problem. Back to the motor section of this bike. So the battery on this bike is the smallest battery that Shimano owns. That is, I'm gonna say more of a gripe. I would have liked to see Polygon go up to the 630, I believe is the size. The bigger battery on this bike give you more range. I was getting around, I think on some of our rides, so we did the 23 mile ride 26 mile ride and i got about 3000 just over 3000 feet of climbing and had i was on on the bottom of the juice in this bike i also did a 16 mile ride with almost 4000 feet of climbing using some boost so and that also got it to about zero depending how you ride it i did notice if you're riding it in eco which if you're gonna be an eco, stay an eco, because once you go to trail or boost, you're only gonna wanna be in the higher end. Um, if you go on eco, you get quite a bit of mileage out of it. Going to trail diminishes it a little bit. I'd say I was getting about 20-ish miles and about 35 to 4,000 feet of climbing on mostly trail. Um, but again, the back to the battery, I would like to see them stretch out the size in this battery and give us a little bit more range. But if you're conservative, which not a bad thing because you're pushing a big bike and you still want to get that exercise, you can go for quite a bit. I purchased this bike on bikesonline.com. So if you're interested in any of their amazing bikes, check the link below. If you buy through our link, we, we get a little bit kickback and we'd appreciate it as it helps our channel. But I know we think about buying bikes from Consumer Direct and there are some, you know, apprehensions to that against buying a bike shop. I will say, that my experience with bikesonline.com hasn't been the greatest. So I did have some issues with some parts on this bike and another bike and getting a hold of them was a bit of a, it was a laggy issue for me. I had to continue to reach out to them. Once I finally did get a hold of them, they took care of me, but that's just something to note. Could be during the pandemic time right now, they're super slammed, but I did want to point it out that there was a little bit of struggle getting some information from them, but after a while, I did finally get in touch with them and they were super helpful to make sure that I was taken care of. My final thoughts on an e-bike. This was not been the first bike that I have grabbed. It, while it is a great, awesome experience to be able to just plow up the climbs, it definitely makes climbing fun. That's something that changed from just a normal traditional bike. But I did find that I've ridden this bike a couple times by myself, but I didn't want, it's not the bike I grabbed to go ride by myself. I really feel like for me personally it's a bike that i want to go ride in a group of e-bikers with and unfortunately i only know one other or two other guys that ride e-bikes and we don't really have that 
e-bike connection where let's go ride e-bikes. So for me, would I buy another e-bike? I don't know at this time in my career or lifestyle, I don't think an e-bike is really my thing right now because I do, there's something to appreciate for me about on the downhill, a bike that's a little bit lighter. It allows me to do some things that I want to do. Um, I feel like I'm more in control of the bike where an e-bike with that extra weight does kind of command a bigger presence on your upper body. Once again, guys, thank you for joining me here on Straight Line MTB. Give us a like and a subscribe so we can continue to bring you some more awesome content. Go check our channel. We have a lot of fun, awesome reviews, some ride reviews, and the first ride review of this bike where I'm just cat Tackling and giggling the whole time. If you guys want to follow us on Instagram and TikTok, get some more Straight Line MTB content and some fun, crazy stuff we're doing. Don't forget to follow us at Straight Line underscore MTB. And again, thank you very much, and we'll check you on the next video.